I'm Brandon, this is a consumer code, and this is the Xbox One Wildcat. So, getting into the outside of the case, we have it square in shape, uh, razor embroidery on the front, nice tightly knitted fabric surrounding it. It's got a green acklet on the side that you can pull all over from one side to the other to unveil the controller. Very nice hard case on the outside. So unzipping it, getting inside. And then you have the foam padding that completely surrounds the controller, um, stopping any type of movement on the inside. You get a little razor sticker I put in there. It's got a nice neoprene pouch, which the original uh, braided cable comes in. I stuck the star-headed screwdriver in there and the two rubber grips for the thumbstick in there. It also comes with a little instruction manual on how to uh, apply the sticker. More on that later, but uh, they come in there as well. The Wildcat controller comes with a proprietary cord that simply goes into the front, powers the device. A little hard to get in at first, but once you get used to it, it goes right in and comes right out. I had a little Hype Evo moment, and the controller was still in my hand. Luckily, the breakaway cable broke away. Otherwise, that Xbox will fell on somebody's head. That's a quick trip to the emergency room. The lanyard isn't a traditional wax-covered cable. It's more of a fabric-based cable, uh, leading to possible threading issues. Bottom portion of the controller, you have the program button, the swap profiles, which hold the profile that you set, regardless if you keep the controller plugged in or not. You have the mute and then the audio button. Also, this razor comes with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which will enable you to equip your rudimentary cell phone headsets to them and get full range of uh, abilities. I was told that I sound much better than the standard traditional Xbox headset, so it's worth noting when you do attach it, you might get some more clarity over the standard Xbox headset. When you plug in the headset and you press down on the furthest right button with the volume speaker on it, you affect the game volume and chat volume by pressing a desired direction on the pad. This controller, when it works, is a symphony of immersion and stylistics at its best. Nothing will make you feel more powerful than when you have this controller in your hand and you're dominating the game. Using one of the four buttons on the bottom row, you can reprogram the multifunction bumpers or triggers to any button on the controller with the exception of the thumbsticks. The Razer Wildcat is a controller that doesn't feature a battery. It just has the braided cable. But the face buttons are all hyper responsive including the multifunction bumpers and the multifunction triggers. The D-pad is thick and clunky but super responsive and dependable. The left and right bumpers are a classical homage to the 360 and the Xbox One Elite. No point in fixing something that isn't broken. Switching over to the back side, you can see the aluminum forged multi-function triggers, the little slots back there. Um, you have the hair trigger stops. Uh, Razor's claiming that it's a 75% reduction in travel length, which is definitely noticeable and then you have the multifunction bumpers which feel as if they were always a part of the controller like they don't feel like anything that was added when you pull all of that together you get a controller that's ergonomically of mythic proportions it's really amazingly crafted Razer's interpretation of the multifunction trigger is something that should be looked upon and referred to as the quintessential additional buttons They've managed to have a spring-loaded switch that when triggered, pops right out. You can easily stick back in that aluminum force trigger, and when you wanted to put it back down, you just unscrew it and the flap disappears. This controller comes in at 262 grams. It doesn't feel like that though, because the weight is evenly distributed throughout the controller. You don't have that hefty battery pack in the centerpiece. 
when I first saw the grip tape, I was a little excited. I was like, yeah, do it yourself project. Customize my controller, make it the way I want to look. I quickly regretted that decision. It was cumbersome. I felt like I was being trolled. $150 controller, the grip tape needs to come pre-installed. In fact, it should be set on so that you can pop it off and on. Once you install that grip tape, it's not really going anywhere. It's not meant to be taken off and on. So remember that when you put it on. Now, I wasn't a real fan of the rubber padding. They were too smooth for me, but for illustrative purposes, I equipped them. The thumbsticks, however, are amazing. Razer has stated that they have a zero slow turn analog technology put in, and it really shows. You can really feel the gradual movement from zero to 100 acceleration-wise and deceleration-wise. And much like the Elite controller, the thumbsticks are engulfed in aluminum, preventing damage over time. The Xbox One Wildcat controller is an amazing controller. It ergonomically is second to none. However, it commits a cardinal sin. Every hour, it seems to just want to stop working. It's irresponsive. You can't speak to the, through the mic. You can't move on the screen. It's really unforgivable. This is supposed to be a pro-level controller. I can't imagine on a stage as grand as Evolution or any other stage from MLG, so on and so forth, where something like this would even be acceptable. Again, it's a wonderful controller, but I can't recommend it because of that simple fact that it just shuts down. So that's my review of the Xbox One Wildcat controller. Wow. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the comment box below. And don't forget you can hit me up on Twitter and Facebook. See you guys in the next video. Peace.